Hello, this is Craig Pelkey for iPro Developer. My topic today is PHP and RPG, what goes where. For our starting point, consider that most IBM iWeb applications are database driven, as opposed to websites that serve mostly static HTML content. As such, most IBM iWeb applications also need to interact with existing IBM i business logic. A possible exception may be a new web application where there is no existing IBM i business logic and all of the requirements of the application can be met with SQL. In that case, you may be able to develop a PHP-only solution using just PHP and SQL. Many open source PHP projects are of that nature. One of the issues that you'll run into when developing a web application using any language is the issue of the code wait. Here we see an example PHP application by Mike Pavlak. This application uses an SQL select statement to get data from the IBM I. The page displays the data in an HTML table. As you can see, most of the code in this application is PHP code. In addition to the PHP, there is the HTML code. Notice that the HTML code is intermingled with the PHP. As you add more code to the page, it becomes more difficult to pick out which section is which. Because this is a simple application, it contains only one SQL statement. Finally, most web applications will also contain JavaScript and CSS code. That's five different languages and syntaxes mixed onto one page. The more code you put onto the page, the greater its weight. It will become increasingly difficult to develop, debug, maintain, and enhance the application. That leads to a question. Should you use SQL in your PHP code? Now, I don't mean should SQL be used. We obviously will need SQL to access the IBM I database. Instead, I mean should the SQL code be embedded within the PHP code? The obvious question is, why not? Why wouldn't you just write the SQL code within the PHP code, as was shown in the sample application? When you're learning PHP, many SQL statements that you see as examples are simple SQL selects. In most real-life applications, the SQL statements tend to be more complicated, usually involving multi-table joins with multiple selection criteria. Also, it's not unusual to have more than one SQL statement on a page. For example, you may need to you may need to run many individual selects to get data to fill list, drop-down list, and other page elements. One way to get the raw SQL off the page is to create SQL stored procedures. You can use IBM I tools to define, create, and maintain an SQL stored procedure. A big advantage of moving the SQL out of the PHP and into a stored procedure is that you can test, tune, and modify the SQL independently of the PHP code. You can pass parameters to a stored procedure. On the IBM I, SQL stored procedures are ILEC programs that are called, so the number of parameters that you can pass is in the hundreds. You can get values back from a stored procedure as return parameters. A stored procedure can also return a value, usually used to indicate the success or failure of the call. Most importantly, for use within a PHP application, an SQL stored procedure can return one or more result sets. The result sets contain the data that you want for your application. To get started with stored procedures, you can use the IBM I Navigator. In its databases feature, Right-click the schema name where the stored procedure is to be created. A schema can be an IBM I library name, so you can use any library on your system that you have access to. Right-click on the procedures item and select the new SQL menu items. The new SQL procedure dialog is shown. On the first panel, enter a name for the procedure and an optional description. If the procedure includes select statements that are meant to return data, enter a value for the maximum number of result sets. Select one or more of select one of the data access values as shown here. Next, click the parameters tab. On this panel, you enter the parameter list for the stored procedure. The parameter names that you enter will be available for use as substitution variables in the SQL statements in the stored procedure. Notice that the name given to the parameter is i underscore bail due, an input parameter of a balance due amount. Finally, click the SQL Statements tab and enter the code for the stored procedure. You'll need the begin and end delimiter keywords as shown here. 
Between those keywords, you can enter as many SQL statements as you need, each statement ending with a semicolon. In this example, the cursor variable named C1 is defined. It is a cursor for the SQL select statement that gets data from the customer credit file. Notice that the WHERE clause selects rows where the balance due is greater or equal to the I underscore bell due parameter value. The open C1 statement runs the select statement. After the open, control returns to the caller. In a PHP application, the results are now available as a result set. As soon as you create a stored procedure, you can go back to the IBM iNavigator and test it. In the Databases section, right-click the database name and select the Run SQL Scripts option. The Run SQL Scripts dialog is displayed. Enter a call statement to call the stored procedure, including a parameter value. When you click the Run icon, the stored procedure is called and the results are displayed. If you get the expected result, great! You can hook up the call to the stored procedure in the PHP application. If you do not get the expected results, you can modify the stored procedure, still within the IBM I Navigator environment. To modify a stored procedure, go back to the IBM I Navigator and select the Procedures item under the schema or library name where it is located. Next, in the list of stored procedures, right-click the stored procedure and select the Generate SQL item from the pop-up menu. The Generate SQL dialog is displayed. You can open the generated SQL in another window, or write the generated SQL to a file. In this example, we will open the SQL in the Run SQL Scripts dialog. After you click the Generate button, the source code for the stored procedure is displayed in the Run SQL Scripts dialog. You can see the code that was entered in the New SQL Procedure tab dialog that we saw earlier. You can also see that quite a bit of additional code has been generated. You can make any changes you need to the generated code and to the SQL select statement. When done, click the Run All icon to recreate the stored procedure. Now, what about calling RPG programs or procedures from PHP? Most IBM I shops will have a lot of business logic in their RPG and CL programs. The feeling is, why reinvent the wheel? The problem is, the wheel might not fit. It might be like trying to put a car tire on a bicycle. Programs that include a workstation file and use display file I.O. operations might be very difficult to reuse within a PHP application. The reason is that the business logic, which you really want to use, might be very tightly bound up with the code that drives the user interface. If you have a lot of 5250 style programs that you want to web enable, you may want to consider using one of the third-party tools that reface and repurpose that type of code. Although it is certainly an interesting programming task to convert a green screen application to another environment, you need to be sure that's the best use of your time before you start the task. But what about RPG subprograms? You know, the type of utility or standalone program that you purposely wrote to be called from another, another program, possibly at many points within a system. For example, in this call stack explosion, you may have identified several of the standalone programs that can be easily called. Those programs do not have any display file I.O., so it will be easy to work with them. When looking into calling RPG or CL programs from PHP, you need to consider the parameter list. If the parameter list is easy to work with, for example, containing simple character or numeric data types, and if you can provide valid parameter values within the PHP application, you can use toolkit features, which I'll describe on the next slide, to invoke the program. There's a potential problem when calling programs. The program that you would like to call may have a very complex parameter list or complex data types, or it may require specific values that were set by other programs higher in the call stack, meaning that you would need to duplicate the parameter setting logic within the PHP code. One possible solution would be to create a small RPG or CL wrapper program that calls the program that you want to use. By design, the wrapper program would expose a simple parameter list that you set in your PHP application. Within the wrapper program, you can code business logic to take the incoming parameters from PHP and convert them to the required parameters to invoke the program. Before you moan and groan about the extra work of another program, and isn't it slow to call an additional program, think back to the issue of the weight of the page. If you don't move the complicated parameter resolution into an RPG or CL wrapper, then you may end up writing complicated PHP code to call the program. 
Think back to the combination of five different languages used on a typical PHP page. Think about reducing the amount of code you put on the page, especially if the code is concerned with plumbing, that is, making calls out to other programs. The toolkit that you can use to connect your PHP application to IBM I assets is called XML Service. This toolkit is a no-charge feature of PHP on the IBM I. It was jointly developed by IBM and Zend. It includes features to access programs, procedures, execute commands, work with data queues and data areas, and access other IBM I features. A great resource to learn more about the XML Service Toolkit is Alan Seiden's website. Alan has put together a really good presentation that describes how to use the toolkit. You'll find that presentation at Alan's website using the URL shown here. That is also Alan that's shown here. So with that, I'll conclude this presentation. For iPro Developer, I'm Craig Pelkey. Thank you for listening in today.